everyone, and welcome to a brand new thing we're doing here on the Onyx Path Twitch. New uh, it's thing. a show we're calling Building Character. Um, and it's kind of came about because uh, Dixie and I really had a lot of fun on the Pathcast recently making some characters for the Chronicles of Darkness. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? What if we just kind of kept doing this? Kept, 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 kept going. Kept I mean, I'm, I'm into it. I like making characters. And... Uh, we thought that maybe Twitch might be a good medium for this, partially because we don't want to have the path catch just become like making characters endlessly. Which... The, but why not? <laughs> the Onyx character path. Are you sure you know, we, we don't just, want that? We just, we just have the path made out of character sheets. <laughs> this is what they're, 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 the stones are. I'm into it. I'm into it. Um, but also, uh, uh, we did some testing and we thought that it might be cool to actually see a character sheet kind of being made uh, during the course of it. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, one thing that, that you pointed out, Dixie, um, was that making a character in isolation isn't really how it's done. Yeah. Um, usually you make characters as a group. Mm -hmm. um, so we thought, we're going to both make characters. You're going to see my character being made, but Dixie's going to be making one alongside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yes, yeah, because we don't want to flood your screen with, like, a bunch of character sheets and books and random things. So we figured we'll just show you Eddie's, and then I will right. upload mine to our Discord after the show uh so exactly. you both of them and also since these are going to be on youtube we're hoping these will also be useful resources for people who want to build a character in the future and maybe want a video tutorial mm -hmm. of how to build a character for a certain game um and like like we do on the podcast we're going to be walking through essentially a hypothetical game like oh what is this game going to be like what do we want out of it um because that does often inform our character choices right exactly um so uh, um, same kind of the same disclosure we had. If you, if you haven't heard the podcast episodes, um, is that as we go through this, we're going to do kind of a season's worth. So we're looking at right now about ten episodes worth, mm -hmm. um, and we're both going to have varying familiarity with each of the games. We're going to be portraying some of them. Uh, we'll be very familiar with, or one of us will be familiar with, the other one won't be. Mm -hmm. Some of them we're both kind of coming in relatively fresh because we, while we've worked on a lot of games, we haven't worked on absolutely everything. Yeah, I mean, we're all passingly familiar with at least the concept, but there are, very, right. there are quite a few games I haven't played. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, so, uh, and because this is live, you're usually see like, you know, fumbling around or, or, or tech issues or the like. That's just, you know, the nature of, of live TV. I don't know if there are any tech issues. I'm perfect at running tech. Okay, well, let me phrase that. There will never be any tech issues. <laughs> I'm like, when I host streams where there's always tech issues. Also, forgive my gnarly bug bite that I keep showing in the thing. I have a gnarly bug bite oh, on my wow. arm. Like, were you... Were you Attacked by a lion. No, bugs just really like me, and I have really bad reactions to them. Ooh. Uh, so usually when I go outside, I, I wear bug spray. Uh, but if I forget... So, sorry about that. I feel like it's distracting, and I kept putting my hand up. So I was like, oh, just sorry. <laughs> it, I mean, I'm I, I full of distracting stuff in my arm, so... I mean, the, <laughs> the other arm has different distracting stuff. Right. <laughs> this one has this distracting stuff, too. I don't know. <laughs> Very distracting people, Eddie. It's, it's, it's dance time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so today uh, we are going to be characters for They Came From Beneath the Sea, which is our first of now several uh, B-movie humor games. Mm -hmm. uh, Beneath the Sea is set in kind of a nebulous 50s era, so these are the kind of really bad sci-fi movies you would see, particularly on shows like... Um, the Mystery Science Theater 3000, but also like on network television, you know, late at night at three Sven in the morning. Gooley. Oh God, yes, Sven Gooley, uh, uh, Elvira. Elvira. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those, those, I mean, those kinds of films. My, um, my friend, Mr. Lobo. Mr. Lobo. Yeah. He's a horror host. He's a friend of mine. I don't think I, I don't think I actually know this character. You check him out. I will. I will send you the website. I look forward to it. Yeah. Uh, but so okay, so these are the kinds of characters you can make. Um. So, uh, again, we want to start with kind of a, a, a rough premise. We have an idea what kind of characters to make. Um, so just my current idea, let me know what you think of this, uh, is a, a group of characters who are kind of in a small seaside town uh, who slowly are realizing that something strange is happening. So they're not knowledgeable like monster hunters or anything. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're just kind of wrapped wrapped up in weird things going wrong. I have a question. Which kind of seaside are we talking? Are we talking like Maine? Are we talking like the UK? Are we talking like Florida? Like there's so many different options that feel very different tonally. 
That that's a fair point. Um, in my head, I was kind of thinking Maine-ish, Great Lakes adjacent, just because that's I grew up on one of the Great Lakes. Um, but I'm open to other ideas. We could like make like an Erie, Pennsylvania game, like that old TV show, Erie, Pennsylvania. Like, yeah, actually, Erie things cool. happen to Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that, that's a good starting point. I it, like it, the it, idea that we're doing. It came from beneath the sea, and we've already tossed the sea out the window. There's there's no sea <laughs> in our game. There's a lake. It's a big ass lake, but it's still just a lake. It, there, it eventually connects to the sea, I guess. I don't, I don't know how water that's... works. Matthew should be here for this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, okay. I, I like the idea because I feel like almost every other game I've seen has been set like on a beach. Aside from the one I played that was set in the Louisiana swamp, which was very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I like the idea of setting it on a fairly placid area. Like lakes aren't that intimidating. <laughs> so so I, it's kind of... I love the idea a... that there's like a scary lake monster. Yeah, it's not a small town in terms of like a rural town, but it's certainly kind of a little more isolated. But as opposed to being isolated by water, it's isolated perhaps by land. That's the second time that I thought about Erie, Pennsylvania in the past 24 hours, which is very strange. <laughs> nice. I'm okay. not going to elaborate further. Not going to elaborate further. No, it's just, <laughs> it's, it, let that hang there. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, ch share my screen now. So okay. we'll try to do some magic here. Magic time! Magic is time. And now they can hear you again. Hooray. Excellent. I, I didn't, that's right. I didn't realize it was a point where I should not talk during a transition. I now mean, I you can, but there was a beautiful title card up on the screen. Yay. <laughs> I'll have to look at that later because I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but, uh, okay. Um, so here's uh, the character sheet. Uh, I'm going to bounce back and forth between the character sheet and uh, the book. Uh, so like most of our games, uh, we're going to start with uh, a concept. Mm-hmm what kind of character you want to play. We've already kind of talked a little bit about it, but, but especially I think for, they came from shorts, summarized concepts are probably better because you want to hit something that's a little more kind of archetypal and flat to reflect these kinds of movies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the examples in the book are like Badass Monster Hunter or a Reporter Who Gets In Too Deep. Uh, hmm. Do we want to be adults or like teens? Oh, uh, so teens isn't like kind of like a Monster Squad or Scooby Doo. Yeah, I mean, or even like in our like bi bikini beach party type stuff, all those people, even though they were played by twenty eight year olds, were often portrayed as teens. Mm. That might even be better. Is like what adults think teens are like in this time period. Yeah, yeah, and we are setting this essentially in the fifties, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my concept is Rizzo from Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. What? She's she's played by a 34-year-old. <laughs> no, that's, that's it's perfect. Fucking great. I mean, uh, uh, some character concepts as like character as played by so-and-so is a really good shortcut. Um, but I think particularly for the game to say that's uh, that's even better. Yeah, so I have put I have put smart mouth teen girl. Who presumably um, is smoking cigarettes in the girls' room and being mean to goody goodies. Um, what if to contrast, I play kind of the um, introverted science kid. Okay, okay. So add that to my concepts. That way you have the smart mouth, cool kid, and the nerdy, you know, weird kid. Yeah, yeah, I'm into it. All right. Especially because uh, it's, 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 it's always fun when those archetypes get, like, thrown together and they have to work together. Right, exactly. It, it, it's a classic movie kind of pairing. Yeah. Uh, uh, of they have to work together, but they don't like each other. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They, at the end, they come to understand each other, and or one of them, oh, it's not. If it was Murder Lake, they would both die, but it's not Murder Lake. Well, so they're right, probably it, with Murder Lake, I would die very soon, because I'm right. pr presumably smoking and having sex. <laughs> right. But we're not, not that kind of movie, so we should No, 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 no. It's, it, it, it's not that kind of movie, but if it were Murder Lake, it would be. Okay, so um, next we choose uh, aspirations. There are two short-term and one long-term aspirations, and these are things that we as players want as goal for our characters. Um, uh, they don't necessarily have to be what the character's goals are, mm -hmm. um, but more of what you as the player want the character to do. Uh, so it can be things like um, get into a fight even if the character wants to avoid a fight. Uh, and... Honestly, from my experience, um, uh, it's it's important 
to have these, but not always at the beginning of the character creation. Sometimes uh, even maybe a session before you start to dial those in. I have picked one, and it's make someone cry. Oh, that's great. Because I think that my character wants to make somebody cry, possibly even your character. I, 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 prob I probably will cry. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm going to have one is uh, correct someone. Because I think it's a, that's good for a smart character to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, long term is uh, we'll put kiss a girl. Okay, okay. Uh, I have another short term aspiration. I'm gonna kind of wait on that. I don't think I have another one yet. I think that my long term aspiration is get out of this town, because that's always what the rebel wants. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> Which honestly, once the town is decimated by you know crab people or whatever, maybe it'll be really easy to get out of. <laughs> Cut this down because this town is broke. Yeah. <laughs> It's on fire. The gang burns down Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah. We burned down the one stage we built. We have nothing left. So mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. over. Uh, okay. Now we're on to step two, which is paths. Uh, we have three kinds of paths in the game. For the Most of the story path games have three paths. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The ones we have here are archetype, origin, and ambition. Uh, archetype is specifically the role your character has in a B movie. Right. Uh, so it's not the job per se in terms of like in the world of the game you're playing but rather what they do in the film mm -hmm. and there are six archetypes which are basically kind of like classes uh there is the everyman uh which is kind of the status quo blue collar character uh the g-man uh which are basically officials of order uh, it can be actual government agents, but also they could be police officers, mm -hmm. uh, bureaucrats, county sheriffs, whatever. Uh, there's the mouth, which is probably what you're going to look at. Um, but they are uh, uh, reporters uh, and also just people who want to make sure to share knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, the scientists, uh, pretty straightforward, is, is someone who uses science to try to overcome problems. Probably going to be you. Yeah. And uh, the survivor, um, which are people who have survive some kind of, of traumatizing experience. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself Dennis the mouth. You're absolutely correct. Um, but not because she's a reporter, but because she's a gossip. Right. And likes to tell everybody, everybody else's business. Mm -hmm. it, it feels the same role, but it's not identical. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my job because I'm a, I'm a 34 year old playing a teenager. Um, right. So I don't have a job. I go to school. It's my job. And and everyone knows who I am because I'm that girl that knows everybody and hates everybody. <laughs> right, exactly. I actually almost never play mean characters. This will be fun. <laughs> fun, fun to make. Uh, so with each archetype, uh, you get access to four skills. Uh, um, and what you want to do is you want to put AR next to the skill. Mm -hmm. So you know which ones are your skills for that for the archetype. Uh, so... Uh, um, you could pick them, but the archetype is recommend skills. The recommended skills for the mouth are command, empathy, larceny, and persuasion. Mm, that makes sense to me, honestly. I feel like larceny is like cutting class. Right. Persuasion is getting out of trouble from cutting class. Empathy is going, oh, you're sad. And command is being like, tell me what you're sad about so I can tell other people. <laughs> what are you sad about so I can narc on you? Yeah, no, I'm into that. Uh, so mine are cultures, enigma, medicine, and science. We're going to be a well-rounded team of two here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely got a little on here. Um, and so for each of these groups, we're going to have more groups with the other paths. But for this one, you get uh, three skill dots to put in any of those four skills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you don't have any dots to start with, and you can have up to five. So I'm going to definitely go with uh, two in science, I think, and one in enigmas. I went with one each in larceny, persuasion, and command. Okay. That just sounded like my character to me. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and, and that, that's a lot of this is like, oh, this, this sounds right. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is your origin path, and this is your background. It's, it's, it can be your upbringing. It doesn't have to be. Right. Um, it's more your backstory and what informs uh, your character. Um, so some example origins, these are pretty common across, uh, story path games. Um, 
is you have things like uh, adventurer or life of privilege or military brats, outdoor enthusiast, street rats, mm -hmm. suburbia. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going with suburbia for mine. Uh, I'm actually going to go with life of privilege because I think that she's a rich girl who's acting out. Or was a rich girl whose parents have uh, quit giving her money. Right. Uh, so life of privilege, um, your skills are uh, command, culture, integrity, and persuasion. Now, um, it sounds like you have command twice. Yes. So let me, there's a, a specific rule for that. I also have persuasion twice. Okay. Uh, uh, um, three, you character may choose both three dots in one skill. I may not use bots for one path associated with a different path. Uh, so I, I thought it had to be separate, but I guess I'm, I'm wrong. So yeah, so you can, you can just Yeah, I think add I can just stack marks. them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's how most of the games do it, but I thought I read something there, but I was, I was incorrect. Uh, so actually, okay, let me... I jump back to the origin path real quick, um, and see. My, mine are culture, empathy, humanities, and technology. Yes, you get. Oh well, tech is going to help you too, probably. Yeah, put, yeah, put or put, put an O by those for origin. Empathy, humanities. Yeah, like technology the main definitely thing help. Everybody is going to learn from this. Is that I look at my keyboard when I type sometimes. So I'm gonna put. Two in technology, and one in empathy. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. good. I put uh, one in larceny, one in culture, and another one in persuasion. Okay. Does that make sense to me? It does make sense. And then finally, uh, we have our uh, ambition paths. Mm -hmm. uh, this is your character's motivation, uh, 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 what she wants to do. Um, so even loners, you know, they have people they rely on and these, these kind of relationships will help you to kind of motivate your character forward. Mm -hmm. So this is to a degree, like if, if archetype is your role in the film, ambition is what makes your character push the plot forward. I'm going to pick Lone Wolf. Okay. I think that I like bitching about how terrible most people are. Aside from sense. other people who are like me, who also hate those people. It'll be a little different from the way it's described in the book, because I'm treating it more like a clicky mean girl situation. Mm -hmm. But that still makes sense to me. Yeah, and these paths are meant to be not only flexible, but also you can make completely new ones if, if none of them work out. Well, then I'm going to put... Um, you just need to pick four skills. I'm going to put mean girl, but I'm going to keep it pretty similar to that okay. one. Okay. Um, I just want to be in charge. H -P -I -C, right. see, you know? Uh, hmm. So that's like things like best friends, community leader, family man, in love, out for revenge. None of those is quite for me. Yeah, I'm going to change it to girl gang. That's what I want. I want to be in a girl gang. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to use community leader as a basis for a new ambition path called know it all. Okay. I want to okay. be the person that. Because community leader is people look to you for guidance and they want people to look to me for the answers. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of close. Um, and so mine was this command, empathy, humanities, and persuasion. I'm going to swap uh, command with sciences. As we mark these with AM. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's uh, science. Empathy, humanities, and persuasion. Those all make sense. So my ambition now is girl gang, which is what I, did, I just also made up. And I decided mm -hmm. that my uh, skills for that were going to be uh, close combat, because why not? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, command again, because I'm going to keep putting dots in command. <laughs> uh, survival and pilot. Oh, I feel yeah, like so you can motorcycle. I, yeah, I want a cool motorcycle. Actually, I'm going to take one out of command and put it somewhere else, but that's okay. I'm going to put that, that, that in pilot so I can have a cool motorcycle. Um, now I'm and becoming a mashup of Grease 1 and Grease 2. <laughs> all about motorcycles. I watched both of those last weekend, by the way. So that's actually oh, really so relevant. Your head. Well, I found out that my boyfriend had never seen either of them. Oh, wow. So whenever I like go on my little rant, and yes, I will go on this rant sometimes about how Grease 2 is a superior film to Grease 1, because it is. Um, wow. It, it's better. It's so much better. Um, but like, 
I, I, I found out that he's never seen either of them. And I was like, Grease is an American classic. It's not, it's problematic, but it, it's fun. So I mean, we just watched it and whenever something problematic happened, we were like, ugh. <laughs> sure, but I mean, that's, that's a lot of old media in general. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, sorry, I digress, but I've got Grease no, no. on the brain right now. And that's, that's why I'm uh, going this route with this character. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we're, we're, if, if you've listened to the podcast at all, you know this digressions are going to happen. Just just enjoy the ride. Yeah, on your motorcycle. Because you're your a motorcycle. cool rider, as Michelle Pfeiffer sings. Cool rider. All right. Um, so now uh, we've <laughs> already started skills. Now we're going to kind of finish those up. Uh, uh, so we should have nine dots already. I just double-checked on my sheet, and I do have nine dots. Yes. We now have... Uh, Six additional dots to put amongst any skills. They don't have to be ones tied to your paths. So we should have 15 dots total once we're done. Six more. Uh, so I'm going to add some a dot of integrity. I'm going to bump up science to four. Bump up technology to four. Um... Team athletics that has a really close combat. Now that really seems to be. maybe they need some culture. I've got close combat, so I can punch aliens for you. Oops, I have too many. To take a that culture back up. Have you? You said it's a four? four. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna. I'm a little more well-rounded than you, but also not as good as, at anything as you are. Right, and then that, and that shows there's two different ways you can kind of, of make these characters. You can kind of fill in as many gaps as possible, or yeah. in my case, I, I, I could do a couple of things really well and everything else. It's like, uh, maybe I have a dot in it. All right, so yeah, I have three dots in close combat because I now now she's meaner. Um, I have two dots <laughs> in command, one in culture, one in empathy, one in integrity, two in larceny, two in persuasion, two in pilot, and one in survival. Excellent. Because, uh, yeah. All right. Now we get on to attributes. Attributes. Um, attributes have uh, three different arenas. Um, there is uh, mental, the arena, the physical arena, and the social arena. Um, that, that's the kind of columns here on the sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have three different approaches, which are force, finesse, and resilience. Those are the rows on the sheet. So arena is the kind of, for the arena, the, 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 the weight, the, the, the part of your character that has value in that space mm -hmm. um, approach is what you do with it. So uh, mental force is intellect. Mental finesse is cunning. That's how that crossover works. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, you get one dot automatically and everything. That's, that's for free and there's already on the sheet. Uh, so you start off with, um, you put, uh, let me double check this real quick. Um, I believe it's six, four, two. Yes, yeah, six. Uh, and you, you, you rate your arenas, which one's your top rated arena, which is your second, which is your third. You put six in your top ranked arena, four in your middle ranked, and two in the bottom ranked. So obviously, mental's going to be my top ranked. Mine is uh, the third one. <laughs> Social. Great. Um... Probably going to be weakest in physical to play the trope. So I'll just have a little bit of dexterity and stamina. Then middle one's going to be social. Yeah, for me, my top rated one is manipulation, which has four dots now. Presence has mm -hmm. three. Composure has two. Because I mm -hmm. feel like I probably fly off the handle sometimes. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. <laughs> might is also a lot of, you know, people with like that tough guy attitude are actually like a little scared. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Actually, you know what? Because of that, I'm going to keep composure at one dot and put the other one in presence. So I'm very manipulative and very intimidating. But if you crack me, I'm cracked. Um, I have three dots in my, in what, like two in dex and two in stam. And then I put my final ones in just cutting and resolve. Nice. So that's that's where I'm at. Um, you were playing the 98 pound weakling. Right, yeah. So uh, uh, four intellect, but. Um, I actually kind of have too many dots. Um, so I think this is going to be a character who finds unknown depths mm -hmm. as he gets pushed. All right, maybe you're just really dexterous. Like, if you took me out of stamina, maybe you're just super... No, stamina's for pulling all-nighters, and dexterity is for manipulating things when you're doing experiments. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. I, I was, I, so I, that's why I kind of went that route. I like it. I um, like it. Uh, and same with composure is, like, he is fragile socially, but 
he's learned how to take it. He actually does realize there's like an inner core of steel there. Yeah, I'll say like he's learned how to take it because he's probably been made fun of his whole life. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas nobody ever makes fun of my girl, so whenever someone is mean to her, she's like, fuck you. But but what? What? How how could you be mean to me? Uh, So now we uh, pick up, we talked about the approaches. Um, We pick a favorite approach. uh, What approach makes sense for your character? And I think resilience based on this conversation makes sense for me. Of course. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Definitely for you. And then we get an extra dot in each arena along that approach. I now have presence five. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, again, like composure four seems a bit high for me, but I, I can't make manipulation or presence any higher. So, yeah. Mm, I mean, it, it, it makes sense. Right. Unless you do have a manipulation skill and like a fast talking, like you make other people feel stupid. <laughs> I do have a one dot in persuasion, but and that's a good point, Doc. It's like that could be more like techno babble. Yeah, stuff. yeah, more more techno babble than like actual maybe like their emotions, right? Right. Okay. And then we have one more dot you could put anywhere in your attribute. So I'm just gonna give myself that fifth out of intellect. Anywhere. Yes, anywhere uh, you want. Cunning. I'm gonna take it in cunning. I feel like cunning works for this character. Yeah, cunning definitely seems right. If not, it's it, the for to use kind of psychological language. Uh, um, you probably have more emotional intelligence than I do. Yeah, except for if somebody makes fun of me, right? Because <laughs> it's all a facade. I will immediately break down crying and then punch somebody. Right, right, right. This character would actually be pretty fun to play because I think she's. You know, we talked before about how I tend to make a lot of characters that just like run head first into stuff because it's mm-hmm. fun for me to play that. I think mm-hmm. I just made another one. <laughs> to like th- there's 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 like a giant like kraken coming out of the lake and she's like let me at him i want to punch it i want to punch it dab it real Cause, hard cause one thing i've learned about you as a person is that you're not fighty at all no never i certainly wasn't fighty all you day yesterday not, <laughs> <laughs> not at all okay so um this is actually going pretty fast this is this is an interesting process uh, well, so, if we get through it really fast, we could just talk about how awesome this game would be. Yeah, yeah, true. Or this this movie. I'm sorry, this movie. Yes, this, this, this I mean, game movie. I did. Let's uh, for the end because I know there's a whole debate about this being a, only a game from one shots, and I, I disagree with that. But. I also disagree with that, yeah. But yeah, we, we can talk later. So next is trademarks. This is something that's distinctive to They Came From Games. Um, and these are your characters' kind of uh, uh, special signature moves. Mm-hmm. Um, they're tied to either uh, a skill or attributes, and you you make these up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are some examples. Um, and whenever you use your trademark, uh, you get to e- two additional dice on the actions roll, and after roll successfully, you get something called directorial control, which basically means that you can actually kind of take control of the scene and introduce new material to the scene. Right. How um, many? So, uh, th- how many trademarks do you get? Um, you get. Three, let me, um, sorry, you get four. Okay. Uh, you get one trademark from your origin, one from your ambition, and two from your archetype. Uh, so if you want to, I can go through and read your, you're the, you're the mouth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, some of the trademarks they give are, uh, and usually they're kind of like lines or phrases. Uh, so it's like, you're hearing it here first, folks. I'd rather trip over my own lips than say something bad about somebody. But... <laughs> Uh, this just in, sky is blue, water is wet, more than 11. Can't tell a lie. Creative narrative, perfectly shot. Won't forgive me. So these won't quite work for your character, I don't think. I'm going to go with uh, some Umbrella Academy tribute and go, I heard a rumor. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Because I've been watching Umbrella Academy. I I swear to God, when I make characters, all I do is think of like the last five pieces of media that I watched and just make that into a character. Which, I mean, if if, if that's a thing that helps you out like please take that and steal it because it works so well for me oh no absolutely like i have absolutely made characters that are like like oh one of my favorite D D characters when i was playing a fourth edition game was basically uh Ezio Atore from assassin's creed 2 mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i was like it's Ezio Atore, but he's a half elf yeah. and over time he spun off and became his own interesting cool character but that's where i started from mm-hmm. yeah no uh my my most my my often talked about character jane giant's bane was a mixture of if the hero of canton storyline from firefly had actually happened and betty from rat queens 
Nice. That's that's how I, I became a halfling chaotic good. I actually didn't know about hero. the Betty from Rat Queens thing, but once you say it now, I totally see that. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I mean, she doesn't indulge in quite as many substances. Well, right. <laughs> but her personality is very similar mm -hmm. uh, in that she's small and fighty. Um, it's like, it's like I'm small and fighty and tend to make small and fighty characters. Uh, I don't know. Is that the thing? Am I going to get psychoanalyzed on this show? <laughs> <laughs> Am I Honestly, to, am I going to psychoanalyze myself over the course of making 10 characters? Well, one thing I have learned from making characters is that, honestly, I have found that um, this is a good digression point. Yeah. Um, uh, character, I believe that characters are ultimately a vote for what you want to see in the game. That's really I, yes, what character shoots are for. Um, and so while it is entirely possible to really stretch and play something that is way outside your comfort zone, um, over time, that can be exhausting. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. It's not good or bad. It's just, it, it's sometimes harder to, to continue to do. So if it's exercises like this, where it's like, I don't know if I'll play this character or I may play a character once, it makes sense to play something that's relatively comfortable for you. So you're going to fall into certain patterns and archetypes. Yeah, um, I can see that. One of the things that I learned as a game designer is like the best way for me to learn a game is to learn its combat system because usually the combat system is the most complicated part of the game. Mm -hmm. And it's usually built on the fundamentals of other parts of the game. So if I understand combat, I have a pretty good sense of how the rest of the game works. So I tend to make fighters. I tend to make characters that will punch people because that will encourage me to use the combat system. Yeah, I can see that. I often, um, when I'm going to like a new group, I often realize that no one is going to make the fighter or the barbarian or whatever other kind of meat show Well, there's that too, yeah. Because a lot of them want to make the cool caster, especially if they're newer to the game. They're right. all like, I don't want to swing a sword. I want to throw fireballs. So because I played like every D&D class, I just bring a fighter now. <laughs> right. And, that, and that's something else. Like for D&D specifically, for example, now it's like I, I've been in a lot of them and I've played in a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of, okay, which classes have I not played? Now it's the, I just want to try things I haven't tried before. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the motivation for making a character, whether it's, this is what the group needs or whatever, there's kind of a weird synthesis there. That's why I'm glad we're doing it in this format because you can make a character in isolation pretty easily, but that dynamic of what haven't I played lately combined with what is everybody else playing? That's much more akin to how these games are actually made. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so anyway, back to trademarks. Um, so you had said you picked, uh, I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor. So we need to tie that to either an attribute or a skill. Uh, manipulation. Yeah, or, or persuasion. Right. Do you think? Uh, yeah, I'll just. I, I'm. I'm gonna go with manipulation. Okay. Um, my my first trademark is um actually. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and I tied that to intellect. That seems like makes no sense. Um. I'm also thinking uh, not in the face, which is a persuasion. I like it. I like it. And these are also, uh, no, you only use trademark once per session. Yeah. Um, so, it, but it's, as a trademark, it's, it's your go-to thing in the movie. So, like, if, if this movie if this movie's part of a franchise, it's the one thing your character is expected to do, but you can't overuse it in the film. You have to do your trademark. Well, yeah, because you have to have that moment in the theater where someone goes, he said the thing! Right, like, exactly. Like, whenever Tony Stark says Avengers Assemble. Yes. And you're like, ah, yes. he said the thing. He said the thing. I love the thing. <laughs> like every you theater can't... I've ever been in when one of those moments has happened in, in like a Marvel movie or even like certain Star Wars phrases, like the, the, the theater mm -hmm. is always like, yeah. People get Right. So or I have, I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah. He said the thing. Um, I think that my other archetype, what do I want to tie it to here? Uh... Maybe something like, um, what did you call me? No, I actually have that for my origin one for Life of Privilege, oh, okay. and it's How Dare You Speak to Me. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to actually do a persuasion one as well to go with my manipulation one called, mm -hmm. called you, you Know I'm Always Right because I always have the gossip. Oh, nice. And okay. so that way maybe I can use it even to like, if we have to go persuade like the fire chief that there's actually an alien. <laughs> Mm. You know, in the lake. I could say, you know I'm always right. Um. Uh, so I actually looked at my origin examples, and mm. one of them is a degree in what. So I'm actually going to take that and add a tie it to my science. What does that do? 
Um, basically, it's um, you know I, I've I've studied. Actually, I probably should change that because it's not not I don't have a degree yet. That's what I say. We're in we're in. How about like I took AP Bio. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. I took AP Bio and yeah. That makes more sense. But the same idea is the, I, I took this weird class and I know what I'm. Um, although actually, now that I think about it, that actually ties better to my ambition. So yeah, because you're always it's just suburbia. Right. So maybe it should be something about like how you know the town really well or something. Like you can uh, navigate really well. Well, suburbia don't really aren't in town. They're kind of different part of town. Uh, gadgeteer, cultured warrior, not soft. Those are the options. Eh. Um, you could do gadgeteer. Be all into sciencey stuff. Actually, I'm gonna put. Uh, I made this in my basement. There we go. I like it. Uh, I am going to look at some other ones real quick because I am curious. Oh yeah, you've got your you got one of your archetype ones, and you said one of your origin ones, right? No, I've got two archetypes in my origin. Okay. So I'm just doing my ambition one now. Um, which I I want to tie to close combat, I think. I'm just having to scroll up in the book. Because I also have the book open. Y'all just can't see me scrolling. Because once again, right. like, we had like four sheets on here going up and down. It, it, would be, it would be a lot. It would be bad. Uh, okay, close okay. combat. Um, While you're looking at stuff. Um, hi, Velvet T. Thank you for joining us. And I'm glad this is a great way to end the workday. <laughs> watching yeah. us make these characters. Oh, you know what? I, I'm actually going to use one from here, too. I'm going to go with Improvised Melee Massacre, which just oh, means nice. that I can use anything for your weapon, pretty much. And that's going to be close combat? Yep. Because... Yeah. I want to be able to fight, because you sure can't. <laughs> I, I, I certainly cannot fight. I... I... I can see this coming into play in scenes, though. I can see a scene where you're, like, you know, kind of, like, cowering a little bit, trying to, like, talk him down. Like, oh, you wouldn't hit me. Like, whatever that, that one you had was. And right. I, and I, face, yeah. Yeah, and I just come up behind him and, like, you know, wing him with a pool cue. Mm-hmm. That's a good scene. It is. I totally I dig it. it, it I can already see us playing those characters. Yeah. Uh, okay, so next we have uh, determined relationships. Um, so... Uh, if you go to the drama section on page 101, it talks about uh, attitudes and uh, atmospheres. Mm -hmm. um, really, we're for, for purpose of character creation, we're really focused on attitude, which is what your character feels towards the other. Um, we have a uh, default rating of two. And then we discuss whether um, if there's any reasons why that, that number should be up or down. Did your character um, have a name yet? Uh, that's a good question. I do not. I'm going to go with uh, Milo Stevens. Milo. What's your character's name? Um, I think she feels like a Roxy. It does feel like a Roxy. Roxy. Let's go straight up Archie Comics and give her a, a, a alliterative name. That should be Ro Roxy Reeves. Nice. Uh, okay, so um, uh, uh, it's basically we decide the characters' attitudes are generally positive or negative, and then we start with the default rating of two. We then negotiate up or down. Um, I, even though we talked about these characters kind of butting heads to start, I feel like positive makes more sense than negative. What if we grew up together and I don't okay. like talking about it? <laughs> oh, okay. Like, what if we, like, grew up together so, like, secretly we're kind of friends? Right. Uh, but only because, like, our backyards touch or something? So, okay. Like, so, like, you know, when it's when it's nighttime and you're done doing all your techie stuff, whatever, you come out and I'm, like, sitting on our old swing set, like, smoking a cigarette. But, like, I don't acknowledge you at school. <laughs> right, I like that. Um, and... Uh, so maybe as we've gotten older, that friendship has soured. So maybe I could argue maybe down to positive attitude one. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Like, 
we'll still talk, but like we don't have as much in common as we did when we were kids. Right. I didn't spell attitude properly at all. There we go. <laughs> well, luckily yours is the one on screen. Thank God you're not an editor. No, I, I edited it after I spelled it wrong. <laughs> right. You, you, you don't have to be a perfect typist to be an editor. <laughs> that, no, that, that's absolutely true. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, okay, so that is attitude. And basically, um, uh, whenever the attitude makes sense, uh, your character gains number of dice equal to the attitude's intensity, which is the number we have. Um, uh, you don't have to use them all at once. In this case, you only have one. Yep. And you only evoke it once per game. Uh, but some example, like if um, I'm getting into a fight and I'm getting beat up, you could jump in as, as my friend and get an extra die on your attack because you're trying to protect me. Yeah, yeah. And also, can you move that throughout the course of the game? Yeah, it does change and evolve. Okay. Um, and as, as more characters come in, you can start to develop uh, attitudes for them. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it's not locked in. Like as, as we become f stronger friends, we can increase that number over time and then get more dice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Or vice versa. We could... We could have an acrimonious friendship divorce, and then, you know, we lose all attitude. Uh, okay, so, um, uh, all right, final touches. I'll make sure I didn't miss something, um, but I realized that tropes are actually under the final touches stuff. Uh, so, um, tropes are kind of distinctive abilities your character has. And they're tied to archetypes. So you could pick two tropes off of your archetype list and then one off of any archetype list, including the one that you were originally part of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so let's start with yours. Um, some of the tropes you have are uh, Spotlight, Showstopper, Investigative Reporting, Shoutouts, Monologue, More Money Than Sense. <laughs> Keep your hands off me, which seems like it's really That's, appropriate. I want that one. Um, you're used to people trying to get their hands on you, people who don't want you around, fans who don't understand boundaries, roll one extra die for defensive actions. Yep, I like it. Um, and then maybe there's catchphrase. Also seems like it might work. Uh, actually, can you go up again to the uh, first couple? Missing clue. Oh, sorry. Um, spotlight and showstopper. Uh, spotlight. Oh, okay. Um, I think I think she likes being the center of attention. Well, it's true. It's true. If you're the the cool mean girl, then spotlight does make sense. Yeah. That means roll an extra die when you're in front and center of the action. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. Um, is there any of the other? Do you want to take a list, one off of this list? Or do you want to look at the other lists? Uh, I'm gonna look at the other ones on my own. While you do yours, if you want. Okay. Yeah, I'll do mine, and then we can go back. That'll make some sense. Um. So for mine, I have things like uh. Weird science, medical genius, outside funding. Um, with my bare hands, I love that B-E-A-R. Yeah, that was fun to edit. <laughs> that, that's amazing. You've got bare hands. Uh, that was theoretical. Uh, Eureka, you're pretty good at putting clues together and figuring things out. Um, so I think I'm going to take Eureka. And also I'm going to preface with the uh, archetype so I know where to find it. And how, how many do you take total again? Uh, two of your archetype and one of any. Okay, cool. That's what I thought you said, but then I started reading things and I forgot. No worries. Um, that was only theoretical. It means I could ignore an alien power. Uh, but the, the premise is you refuse to believe what you see. I don't know if that ties into my character. seems like he's the anti-skeptic in some ways. I'm going to do weird science. I can uh, roll an extra die when using an alien device. That makes more sense. That's cool. I am into it. Keep scrolling up too far and seeing I, I, I was a teenage shrimp. And I just, it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> and is that a trope? No, it's one of the fiction pieces. Oh, right. Oh, uh, I'm going to look at great. some everyman tropes here. Yeah, I uh, was looking at a few of those. Um, I was thinking on she, grit and determination. That makes sense for you. But I was also thinking, for me, honesty is best policy. That could be good. The other one that I put on my sheet that I was thinking about taking was sunglasses, which is that oh. you just have sunglasses that make you look cool, and so you receive plus one to interrogate people. Honestly, yeah, yeah. No, you should get sunglasses. That makes uh, that, I love that. Okay, okay. So I have I have I've taken sunglasses from the G Man because I have cool sunglasses. That that's amazing. Yeah, I took, I'm taking honesty as the best policy, so I get plus one when I'm telling the absolute truth. 
Uh, okay. Um, so let me go back to final touches. Um, now, finally, we get uh, three quips. These are things that you can say. Um, they're, they're usually played on cards. Obviously, we're not going to have cards for this. Um, and then when you say the line, you get extra dice. Say the thing. Uh, since we don't have cards, one of the, the flaws of doing it this way, um, we'll have to just kind of roll on the table. Uh, you get um, one quip from, let's see, uh, all characters are with three quips. Oh, okay, so you get one quip from two decks and then one quip from any deck. That, I, was, I was confused for like, I'm like, do you get three quips? Okay, so you get one quip from Why So Glib and one from the Flirtation. Do you have dice handy by chance? Uh, I have a, the Onyx Path Dice Roller app and also other online dice rollers. So I think these are... Are these to D D20 tables? I think so. One, two, three, four, five, well, six. Well, guess who's about to open D&D &D Beyond? 15, 15, 15, 15, <laughs> Just to roll 17, a D20 18, 18, a couple 18, times. Uh, 19, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, close enough. Well, I'm going to do this on D&D &D Beyond. Okay, so roll first one. Because I didn't think I needed a D20 for today. Sure, yeah. It's one of the rare... I'm, I'm, I'm finding a way around the, the limitations we have here. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just uh, rolling on a character. It's going to work. It's all good. You you can also pick them, but sometimes it's fun if they're random. Right, Although, yeah. I, mean, I, I always give people full leave to, like, veto one. roll or whatever, yeah. Okay, you're rolling a D20. Because sometimes it's fun to try to find something that you would care to normally say and find a game for it, and sometimes it's like, this is just isn't going to work. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> Uh, the one I got for Why So Glib is never thought I'd be fighting underwater in a rented dinner jacket. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which is weird, but now it makes me want to find a reason for my character to grab somebody's dinner jacket. <laughs> yeah, no, but again, it, it gives you goals. It's very strange for my character, but I kind of love it. But, but what did you get for your first one? Uh, so I, I'm rolling right now. Um, I, 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 I was so busy focused on yours, I did not oh, check okay. to see which one I need. Next I get um, so I get to uh, please enjoy this great portent and and before you pull the switch. So, uh, oops. Please enjoy this great portent. I rolled a four, which is... I don't think I've ever bargained with anything quite so hideous. <laughs> Okay, on the flirtation table, I got, well, now, what oyster did you come out of? <laughs> Which I think is actually very funny and something that my character might actually say to somebody. Um, and then I get a one for anybody? Yeah, for, for pull a switch. And to, th uh, to think people laugh when I name my fists, I don't like that one. I don't, I don't think you would name your fists. Sorry to throw a hairnet on your evil plans. There we go. That one's hilarious. So now yes. we're going to have a scene where we're fighting in like a hotel because I've grabbed somebody's right. inner jacket and you've used a hairnet. Yes. I am making the weirdest rolls right now. And I'm going to pick... Um, hmm. So I, I went through for Bow's Defiance and Tough Talk because I felt okay. like I needed a Tough Talk. Yeah, And I have rolled sense. up, if you're going through me, you'll have to go through me to do it. <laughs> Which I will 1,000% make sure I say. Fuck yeah. Uh, because I'm going to have a hilarious. Quip your griping. Let me, try, let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13. If you need me, I'll be in a dry, monster free place. That's a good one. That's a good one. It is a good one. It is a really good one. I think that my favorite thing about mine is that I rolled an 11, a 10, and a 12. So they were all like right in the middle of the. <laughs> Thing. I was uh, like, I did that's it on perfect. purpose. Yeah, I rolled like really high and then really low. Okay. Uh, so, okay, let me double check. I think that's everything. We, I don't have connections or stunts. Are there things we should be doing right now? Um, we we kind of glossed over connections and we did uh, paths. So that's a good point. Let me scroll back to that. Um, because, so path. It consists of the following things, which is a sword description of the path, which we covered. Mm -hmm. um, four skills, which we covered. Uh, each skill has several trademarks, which we covered. Um, a path condition, which we covered. Actually, so connections aren't listed on there. Mm -hmm. um, you do get connections for each path. Maybe it's under determined relationships. I may have 
skipped over that. Why are you skipping stuff? Gosh. I know I'm the worst. Um, yeah, because also, like, you apply different intensities, different characters, uh, but we only had one, so it's kind of a moot point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, let me scroll back one more time just to make sure I didn't... Uh, origin path. I, I know they're all just like a single person related to the path. And they are, like, in the actual... Uh, archetype section. Right. Uh, so I think it is... Um, so I'm kind of just b bouncing around here. I think you pick one connection per path. I believe that's how it goes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You do. And they, there are some examples listed for like the various archetypes and things. For like my archetypes, I might not use any of these for this one, but it does select like su su suggest like camera operator, lo local celebrity, newspaper editor, or a political pundit, or the mayor. Right. Which would make sense if I was like playing an actual reporter, right? Um, but I am not, so I am going to go with. Uh... I'm going to go with like local lawyer because that's my dad. It makes sense because I'm life of privilege. So yeah, local lo local attorney who's high Free up. Law. Is his name Phoenix? No. Okay. His name is Saul. <laughs> You better call him. You better call him. <laughs> Not something I've been watching, but I think that my boyfriend has been watching and telling me about. Therefore, also in my head right now. Right. All uh, right. So for my or actually, that's going to be my origin one. My archetype one's going to be different because that makes the most sense for my origin one. Um. I'm going to say that I know the local drug dealer. Ooh. Because I get rumors from him about who is buying stuff, and also he probably sells me pot. Because it's 1958, and that's just becoming a big thing. <laughs> um, and then girl gang. Uh... I'm just going to put I, I, the name of somebody else in my girl gang. That makes sense. And so if I need help, I can call her. I tend to like to put just descriptors for my connections, and then I either come up with names as I need them, or if a character shows up that fits that role, I kind of go, can we just say that's my connection? Yeah, yeah. But, I'm um, gonna say, but like, either way it works. Yeah, I mean. Somebody, like, gang, gang member of some sort, but in the 50 cents of, like, just a gang of kids that roll around on motorcycles smoking. Oh, yeah, no, totally. This is, this is like, you know, not hardened criminals. No, this is the T-Birds and the Pink Ladies. Right. Because exactly. I just watched Grease and Grease too. <laughs> <laughs> I think you may have mentioned that. <laughs> well, we're going to have to wait and see for our next episode of what I've watched for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I picked a science teacher with dark secret, uh, neighborhood friend, and favorite librarian. Yep. I got drug dealer, local lawyer, and girl gang member. Who I have yes. preemptively named Dolores because I like that 50s name. Indeed. Uh, as for stunts, um, that's not something you necessarily create uh, for character creation. Those are things you have access to. Mm -hmm. um, it's under uh, system somewhere. I will Loose change. It. Stunts. Up, 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 up the top. Up, up two. Up two lines. Loose under change. Where? Loose change. Colon. Oh, <laughs> right. It's okay. I like saw it, and I was like trying to direct you to it because I can't move your mouse for you. Right. Um, and actually, also, there is a uh, an appendix that also lists all the stunts. Um, so this well, sets up all the, the stunts here. Um, so really, uh, the the favorite stunt section here are just, these are stunts I tend to like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can write down the cost and the page number that are on there so I can make sure I keep track of it. Um, so, you know, doing things like, oh, I, you know, like your character probably has old school carnage is a pretty regular thing. So you might want to just say, okay, I know that that's two successes and it's on page 114 if I need to look it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's an optional thing. And usually that's something that I have found tends to, as you come for gameplay, is, is oh, okay, I, I tend to use something to write down so I have a space to remember it. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Now I know. So, so you have access to all the ones from your archetype? Uh, stunts are not tied to archetype. Some of them are. Uh, go down. Are they? Go down. 
Ha-ha, oh, right. look at that. I, I, th I think, I could be wrong, just let me, let me double check, but I think um, maybe they cost cheaper. It's been a while since I've looked at these stunts. Uh, I'm on the wrong page, that's why. Good job. Good job. Good job. Uh, so yeah, there, well, there are definitely every, uh, st you know, all kinds of stunts, and also um, stunts are divided into simple, flashy, and daring, so, mm -hmm. and then those determine the costs. Um... Do, do, do. So I th I think it's been a minute that that the the ones that are for the archetypes are just ones that archetypes tend to do. Oh, okay. I don't think it's you could only use those. Okay. Now I know. Uh, so like to go to your section here. Um, My section. You know, you're gonna do things like ego boost and gift of gab. But that doesn't right. mean I can't necessarily do that. It's just you're more likely to. So it's, it's kind of compartmentalized for you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So, so yeah, again, they're not things you buy that, in terms of like putting on your character, just things you want to have access to. Nice. Uh, you but yeah, my that name is, wrong. that's it. I did? Yeah, I spelled it with a Y. How was I supposed to know that? Because that's this how audio only. Roxy Hart. From, no, actually, that's not how she spells it. <laughs> I don't know, because I like it with a Y. I like I like Roxy with a Y. I like Dixie with an IE. Well, there you go. Well, cool. We made characters. Great way to end this. Well, oh. If you've learned nothing, you should know that Dixie spelled an IE, but she prefers Roxy with a Y. And, that's, and, that's and, and Eddie's with a Y. Eddie with a Y. Yes. But spells Roxy with an IE. It, it's a whole thing. Right. Um, it's, it's 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 complicated. Are you are you ready to pop out of this view? Oh yes, I should do. You should do it. Okay. I'm gonna Here go, we go. our card. We're back. Hooray. Hey, Hooray. I, I, I guess it's working pretty well, that, that transition. Yeah, little, 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 little transition cards. So you have a little, <laughs> little factoid you can read real quick. Yes. I, I try to give folks enough time to read them. If they're not giving you enough time, just let us know, and I will slow them down in the future. Or, and, you know, catch on YouTube and pause it and read them. Yeah, yeah. Or I can put a little, like, a little, like, 10-second music sting in there or something. Little, <laughs> doo -doo. There you go. There you go. Give us a chance to get a drink or something. Just I'm just away. thinking of the adult swim <laughs> bumpers, you know? Right, yeah. Or um, loading screens for video games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Except for these right now are all just full point text on a black background, so it's more like the adult swim bumpers. But yeah, they work. Maybe they'll get fancier in the future. I don't know. I made these today. What, what, what if you made them all like the It's Always Sunny Tarot cards? I almost did. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> Instead, I found a very nice find that I like a lot. Uh, okay, but that, that's probably the better answer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's, they came from beneath the sea character creation. Now, what do you think we're going to fight in this game? Um, I honestly, I mean, I, I think if we were to stretch things a little bit, I, I could see these characters maybe also fighting monsters, but I think primarily they're probably going to be fighting some kind of secretive aliens that uh, a mysterious government organization is either protecting or trying to uncover. Or maybe or, or maybe the aliens are disguising themselves as people. Yeah, there you go. And like, I'm one of the ones of... who's like, no, I know that girl. She would never do that. You know, da, da, da. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe little Stepford Wives, little um, yeah. body snatchers. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd Something that adults can go, you're just making this up. Because if it's like, if it's like a, a teenage lobster or a teenage shrimp, it's like, okay, well, that's obviously weird. So you're correct. So it makes something that, that looks human. So that way we can be ignored and ridiculed. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea that like one of the people in my girl gang or something is suddenly like, you know, dressing real normal and mm -hmm. like going to class. And I'm like, uh, what's up with her? <laughs> like, Right, or like someone in my lab um, has suddenly got access to way more interesting science than we're supposed to be having as kids. Yeah, right? He like makes like an anti-gravity device for the science fair. Because, right. <laughs> because like he thinks that's very simple tech. Yes. And he was told to make a simple machine. Right. And, like all, all of the humans are like... I have made this model of volcano with actual lava! <laughs> ah! <laughs> well, cool. Well, I hope you all join us in the future for some more of these. What's our next one going to be? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, uh, next episode, it'll be in about two weeks. We're just every other week, so yeah. um, it's not every Thursday. And some weeks we're going to skip because, like, conventions and whatnot. Because we um, feel like it. <laughs> right, true. We also just say, I don't want to do it. 
But yeah, next um, the, next week is actually Gen Con online, so we'll be doing Gen Con. Right, online so it's gonna be three weeks from now. That's thank you for that. That is a good point. No, that's actually two, two, I don't know. Whenever it, it'll be sometime. We'll we'll advertise it. You'll see it. Um, so it's it's August eleventh ish. I want to say. Yeah. Uh, but um, we're going to actually do a little bit of uh, showing you upcoming products in a way. Um, we're going to be making, using Squeaks and Deep, which is out. Um, but we're actually making rabbits and hares from the Squeaks and Deep companion. Which I haven't even seen yet. I'm so excited. I'm right, going so to make a bunny. I have to send you the manuscript for that. You have to make a hare because I want to make a bunny. You can make the bunny. I'll make the Yay, hare. Yay, bunny. <laughs> um, but it also, it'll also show you like how to make characters from Squeaks and Deep. It's just these are slightly different versions of those characters. So, I mean, if you've seen Squeaks... It, it, you will also learn how to make Squeaks and Deep characters. It's just as opposed to, to making rats and mice, we're going to be using rabbits and hares instead. So, totally awesome. A little awesome. bit of a preview thing, but also established character creation stuff. So. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, you can find me at this handle, Dixie Cyanide, uh, pretty much everywhere, and on the Onyx Pets Discord, and I'm going to upload my character sheet to the Discord uh, in just a few minutes, probably in the Streams channel. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I was, I was about to ask where should I upload it, but streams makes perfect sense. And you? And uh, you can find me uh, at uh, Pugsteady on Twitter. You can also find my website, Pugsteady.com. Um, and then once you uh, download the character on the Discord, you can see me hanging around usually posting Transformers streams. Um, although I ha I've been behind lately. I tried I to, to summon you like two days ago and you weren't summoned, or yesterday. I uh, I, some some days it doesn't always work. I was it's, really it, sad. If it, if it happens all the time, then you expect it. Oh. Also, I, I have to go back now and find out where you summoned me because I clearly missed it. <laughs> I didn't um, tag you on purpose because I wanted to see if it would just summon you. Uh, I see. I see. I see. Uh, so yeah. Um, thank you all for hanging out, and uh, we look forward to next time we do squeaks and deep. Yeah. So totally. See, see everybody later. We'll see you then. Bye.